Hello everyone, I'm Marina and it's a Cromel School. How to fix wide, trapezoidal nails. Of course, gel polish won't change the game here, but sculpting will. So we will do a cool transformation. It will be exciting, let's get into it. Here are my model's nails, they are trapezoidal. And the free edge is wider than the cuticle zone. Such nails won't always look good under just gel polish. So today we will do nail sculpting and try to make these nails narrower and more elegant. First things first, let's prepare the nail plate for sculpting. I lift up the cuticle with a diamond flame drill bit. I won't cut it now. I will do it after sculpting, since these cuticles are thin and I may easily injure them. For this cuticle type, I have chosen a red flame drill bit. It suits here the best. I completely remove the free edge before sculpting. I polish the surface for better bonding. As a rule, such trapezoidal nails are upgrowing. And if we keep the free edge, the form will automatically go up. And we don't need that. So make sure to remove the length. Of course, if your client refuses to have nail sculpting and asks you to keep natural nails, we can do it. And just leave the sides of the nails uncovered while opening the sinuses and painting them well. That way the nail plate will look even. Sure, the sculpting will do a better job, since we can form the free edge in such a way that it will fix the nail shape. I apply adhesive products, a dehydrator, since my model's nails are a bit wet, and an acid-free primer. I apply it in a thin layer. One brush is enough for a few nails. Don't apply too much, though, since it can cause liftings. As for a base coat, I will use this tacky rubber one by Mystique in a thin layer with no alignment. Cure in the lamp for one minute. I will use these paper forms for sculpting. I tear out the metal part so that I could set it up. I try it on and now there is a gap between the gross point and the form, which means that I need to cut it out deeper. Just a little bit, but it will get right under the nail plate. And the coating will hold on well. If we don't cut it out, the gel can get into the gaps and on the sides, and the nails will crack. I make cuts in the gross points to open up the lateral folds. I stick the form and set it up. It should go straight, not too downward or upward, just straight. Make sure to press it well around the finger. Stick the lower ears Press the form well, so that we could shape almonds. This shape will flatter this particular nail type, since it will narrow down the nail plate visually. I set up the forms on a few nails. 
but if your forms aren't that sticky, do one nail at a time. For sculpting, I will use this milky gel, milky pink, and a translucent milky one. I will use the first one for the underlay and build up the architecture with the translucent shade. We want to get a soft porcelain effect and not a thick one. I grab a small drop, put it on a paper form and pull out the lens. It is very important to find the right lens. If you have never had long nails, then such lens that I'm doing now will be dangerous, since you may accidentally hit something and break the nail badly. Explain to your clients that they should be careful with such lens. But if they have already had long nails and they love them, then it's all good. After curing the material, I press the tips with reverse tweezers to make them narrower. We don't do it all the time. Only if the nail plate is wide or trapezoidal. And if your client's nails are fine, there is no need to clip them. Sand to cure. Warn your clients that if they feel burning, they need to get the hand out of the lamp. Wait for it to stop and only then put the hand back. Once it's cured, I can remove the form. These underlays are thick enough so they won't break. We could also file the nails at this stage and then work in a no filing technique. But I decided to leave it for later. I will apply two drops. The first one is put in the center of the nail plate. I spread it to the central part of the natural nail and pull it down. This way I fill in the central area. Here in the lamp. And now I need to build up the cuticle zone. Why can't we do it with one drop? Well, firstly, a thick layer would burn the client's nail plate badly. And secondly, it is hard to control such a thick layer, and it will flow everywhere. So using two drops is safer. I turn the nail over and spread the gel with a thin brush to build up correct architecture and not to file it later. Sand it to cure. I do one nail at a time, so that the gel couldn't flow. After wearing fake nails for some time and clipping them, there is a high chance that the natural nail plate will get narrower with time. I'm sure you have noticed this effect even after wearing gel polish. When a client wears it for a couple of years, the nails get narrower. So we can get the same effect here, which would be great for my model. After curing the second layer, I need to clip the nail with reverse tweezers. Once I release, it presses the nail in the gross points and add the free edge. We don't press it higher than the gross points, since it can cause lateral onycholysis. I put on a metal clip with its ears down to fix the arch. Since pressing it with tweezers isn't enough, we need to fix it. So I send it to cure with the clip on. It should cure for two minutes. Then I wipe off the tacky layer and proceed with filing. First, I shape the almond form from the top view. Then I turn the finger and file the lower parallels. There should be a straight line first and then a smooth lift. 
If we lift them up from the gross points to the free edge, then there is a high chance that the nails won't be strengthened enough. I smooth out the surface with long moves, since I laid it out quite nicely. There is not too much filing to do. I remind you that I have not cut the cuticle yet, so I quickly file there. I compare the lengths in pairs. You can also use any measuring tool a compass, paper, or even an orange stick. Make sure that they are all of the same length. The middle one can be a bit longer, since it is wider. I buff the surface with a soft buffer, since I will add a simple nail design. So the surface should be smooth. Now it's time to cut the cuticle. Since it has fallen after filing, I lift it up with an orange stick, opening its pocket, and quickly cut it up with tweezer scissors. They work like tweezers, which is great for beginners as well. For example, our students work with such tweezers, and they love them. I degrease the nails, remove all the dust, and proceed with the design. I will need a few neon shades, green and orange, and some glitter gel. I paint such lines using my thin French brush. First, I paint all the pink lines and then add green ones a bit higher. And between them, I will paint a glitter line. So this design is very simple. Anyone can do it, but it looks amazing. So I'm glad that my model found this design, showed it to me, and we recreated it. I cover it up with a medium layer of a top coat to make sure that the lines don't pop out. We've got that porcelain effect that we wanted. And this softest nail design, though the color is a neon. We can see that the tips are very thin, just right, about one millimeter. There are no layerings under the nail plate, and even the hand seems longer now. Check out this before and after. Here is the finished result. I think that it looks wow! Write your opinion in the comments. Success in your work! Good luck! Bye bye! Why do I keep saying that?